Let's go to those foundations, Rory. Life scripts. What are they? Well, it was back in 1972 where Eric Byrne um, defined something called life scripts. And life scripts are exactly what they say on the tin. They are a script that we live out due to basically the things we are told as children. And I'll give you a little example of this that I used to use when I taught. Many years ago, I was in a supermarket, a rather large supermarket, and queuing up to get my tea bags. And one of the um, assistants, one of the people who worked there, had brought her twin children in to show her colleagues, you know, show off your new children. And they were in a little buggy side by side, and they were like two peas in a pod. You couldn't separate them. And she said, here, here they are, and this is, you know, and they gave the name and said, and this is the good girl, and this is the one who's naughty. And I thought to myself, no, please, <laughs> please, because that little child, will, will, one of them will go, I'm good, and the other will say, I'm naughty. And if that, I mean, it's, you know, it's what, sometimes it's what we as parents do. We don't do it out of any malicious uh, intent. But if that message is reinforced through the years, then that becomes a script, like an actor would use a script to portray a character. That's exactly what happens. And the things we're told as children then go on to form how we live our life. And I'm reminded of a very sunny um, May afternoon, a good few years ago, where I was explaining this. And one of my students said, no, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe that what you're what you're told as children um, influences how you become. Absolutely not. And I, you know, I I I don't have any influences on me, and um, I do as I want, and no one tells me what to do. And it went on and on and on. And I said, you know, when you were little, what did your parents used to tell you a lot? And she thought, and she said, you never do as you're told. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and there it is. It played out in her and. Honestly, it, 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 you know, if I could have slapped her across the chops with a wet fish, um, you, you couldn't have stunned a person anymore. And it was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. And, and it happens. And we get messages. I mean, a, a classic message, of course, is big boys don't cry. That was a message that I was told. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, big boys don't cry. Be a, be a brave little soldier. And, you know, that, that kind of message is, is still echoes through male experience of showing emotion and is, is so damaging. So life scripts can, can kind of influence how we live our life. And part of um, a, a TA therapist job is to try and help the client get a new script on the road, mm. play another part, think how past experiences have influenced the here and now and try and put a new script on the road. Yeah. I like how you said it's like being an actor, having a script, having something mm. with you, an invisible script that you pull out from time to time and play out. Um, and it can be based on messaging from from children, uh, from being a child, as, as you've kind of covered there, Rory, it can also be based on life experiences that we experience and then surmise going forward, it's going to be the same and that it's going to repeat and play out again and again. And it's interesting how the, the, the theories kind of overlap one another when you're speaking about uh, those messages we get in childhood, we look to person centered therapy, we look to introjected values, the values of another that we take as our truth and we live to that and in transaction analysis we have life scripts which is similar in 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 some ways um so i'm gonna look at it in terms of uh you going through life uh, and you um <clears throat> as a child you witness your parents break up so there is a breakup in the in 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 the in your parents we kind of take out our little script and we go, okay, parents break up and we write that down. And then you go along a little bit and then you have your first relationship, the young love, and you're in love and it's all going great. And then you get dumped. And you pull out your piece of paper and you go, hold on a minute. This happened to my parents. Look at this. They're, they're, theirs didn't last. And you write on there. And obviously this is all happening subconsciously. Break up relationship, break up. And then you go into another relationship. And after a few months, what happens? that breaks up to the person leaves you you get out your life script and you go ha ha here it is i'm seeing the pattern whenever i'm in a relationship the other person 
is going to leave me. And this is now the life script. This is now the life script. And this person goes on through their life and and, and any relationship they get into, when the person leaves, they take out the script and reinforce it. They get out a big red marker and go, yes, and underline it. You see, this is how it is. This is how life plays out. And what happens subconsciously is this person then starts acting in a way within relationships that will eventually force the other person to leave. Subconsciously, not, not knowing what they're doing, thinking, and it might be, well, I don't trust this person. I know they're going to leave. There might be great insecurity and the person will eventually go, you know, I, I just can't go on with you being like this. And the person will go, aha, you see, there it is. And there's an example of a life script of how it's written, how it's reinforced. And every time the script plays out, it becomes stronger and stronger. They, they're difficult to see because we don't see them. It's taking place subconsciously. When we do see them, we will usually defend them. Ah, but I just haven't met the right person yet. Ah, but it will always be externalized. And the work in TA is to recognize this is your life script. You're playing it out. And then only when we accept it, is there an opportunity to maybe write it re differently? Yes, I, I like, I really like that, Ken. Write it, write it, re, rewrite your script. And it, it does speak to actually a school of TA called Redecision Therapy, which was developed by Robert and Mary Goulding that, that, that combined areas of Gestalt and TA to um, help people put a new script on the road. The, the clue is in the name, Redecision Therapy, making different decisions and deciding that, that you know these old actions aren't getting us where we need to be so we need to think of something new and working with that in therapy to develop a new life script but i i tell you what ken sometimes it's not just parents who who are, are people that we meet who can write our initial scripts it's also society ken and myself are neurodiverse we're both dyslexic ken ken you know, spoken quite often about being a, a, an autistic man and the messages we got in childhood um, were that you couldn't read or write, your penmanship, as they used to call it, can you believe they used words like that, wasn't good. <laughs> and you were, you basically, you were dumped in the, you know, you were, you were a bit thick. I was told on a number of occasions I was a bit thick. And if I think of my life, I, you know, I think, well, you know, I'm a, a bit thick, I might act a bit thick. And I went through a great proportion of my life not really thinking too much of myself in terms of my intellect, because because society to some extent because they didn't understand dyslexia and neurodiversity had written me off and and i'd help write myself off because i'd listened to that and it was only when i met someone into my 20s who said no no you're not you're not you're not stupid you're dyslexic and i'm like what's that and it was only when someone pointed it out and said actually look at the things you're doing you you you, you, you you're quite you're quite capable it's just that you don't do it in a traditional academic style. And that changed everything, Ken. You know, that led me on a path to go to college. I went back at 40 years old with no qualifications. And uh, it, it led me to making a podcast with you, Ken. Um, so, so sometimes f rewriting our life script is really, really important. But it can be a difficult process because we've got to look at those past messages. It's not I don't think it's sometimes very easy. From my own experience, I had to look at past messages. Um, they came from all directions, Ken, and and sometimes from people who should have been caring for you. Yeah, yeah. It, it, for, it, j just what you shared there, Raul, it's so strong, it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many students um, say, oh, I'm not very academic. I'm, I'm not good at this kind of stuff and i wonder where that comes from and what what wrote that script because i certainly shared your script rory i i think yeah. i had my own copy i probably <laughs> it. <laughs> wow there's a word you don't hear often focus that yes. <laughs> i'm showing my age here um uh, a, a copy of that exact same uh, uh, script. I was I, I didn't do well in school because of my neurodiversity. It was never picked up. I was labelled lazy and non-academic. I, I thought I I'm not an academic. I can't do this kind of stuff. And I look now, um, and I qualified as a counsellor. I, I then qualified uh, uh, to teach. Uh, I have 
been involved in delivering supervision training, online and telephone counseling training. I run a training company with you, Rory. That you're an author. Written, you've written a, you've written a couple written of books. books. Yes. Uh, and I'm dyslexic. Oh, I can't write. I'm not good at writing. I'm, I'm an author and I've written a book. And it, and it And it takes challenging the script to get to that point. It takes challenging it, looking at it. And it's frightening to challenge a script. This, you know, that you, you great with the uh, re remembering Rory who who said what, and it's that that all behavior is goal directed. Uh, Rogers, uh, that was uh, 19 propositions, I think. Thank 13, you. 13, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I knew it was there in the theory somewhere. See, I told you I'm not an academic. Notice how he pulls out his script and underlines it in red. Um, but it, it it's oh now I can't even remember where I was going on that one. That's a great one. I've I've kind of hit a dead end there. But it, it, yeah, so the the life scripts we we're, we're playing them out. We don't see them. Oh yes, I remember what it is. It's that there is comfort in the script because we kind of go well. I know what's going to come next. I'm going to submit that assignment and it's going to get referred because and when it does get referred, it's like you see, I knew that was going to happen anyway. If it doesn't get referred, it's not even noticed. It's not even noticed as a, whew, oh, I'm lucky I got through that with me not being such an academic. There's comfort because our behaviors are goal directed in not challenging our script. It's, it's, uh, it's tricky, but first it needs to be seen. It needs to be seen. It does. And I think even, even the, the term academic is, is an interesting one, isn't it, Ken? Because it, it's almost like saying I'm, I'm not one of them. Anybody who writes an assignment and uses references and quotes books and comes to a conclusion is by default an academic. It's not someone with a, a gown and a cap who sits in an oak panelled room with a full of books um, with a pipe. Don't know where the pipe came from. But, you know. <laughs> I have a pipe, Rory. It, it was, it's, it's in my vision, so there we have it. And and it's 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 about saying it's it's about you know finding yourself. And it is it is really difficult. And I'm sure there must be some people listening to this who are who are saying, this sounds a little bit like, this sounds a little bit like me. This sounds like the, the kind of things I'm doing. And, and if that's the case, I would say, you know, get yourself some help, get yourself some therapy. As, as, as my good friend Bob Cook would say, who's a TA therapist, get a new script on the road. And it's, it's not easy to put a new script on the road, but once, you, once you're in a new part and you're playing a new part, then it becomes quite natural. And yeah. quite and quite easy to do, but that transition can be difficult. But you know, as the as the famous Tony Robbins famously said, if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. Yeah, yeah, and and it's almost like we bring it into reality. We are reinforcing and playing yeah. out. So you you mentioned the actor. You know, once you've got that script, it's almost like I know what's going to happen in the future because it always goes like this. It always goes like this. And we almost play a part that brings that about. We act in ways that kind of play out the script. One of my really strong scripts that I still, I, I know I still carry this around with me today. And that is, people will always let you down if you give them enough time, Rory. Just they'll yes. always let you down. It doesn't matter who that person is. They're eventually going to let you down. Yeah. And, you know, I look back at my my life and I look back at my childhood and the, there were some rocky roads there. And I guess I'm, uh, it could be uh, it could be said that I was let down uh, by my primary carers and not that they didn't love me, but the looking back and, and kind of living the life I did. Um, and, and I guess the script may have started there and I've, I've used it all my life. That, and, and, and what that does is it kind of puts me in a place of, well, you can't really trust anyone because they're just going to let you down eventually. And I'll play out this, this, this script. And every time that somebody says they're going to do something and they don't do it, or uh, uh, says they're going to arrive at a certain time and they don't arrive at that certain time, I'll take it out and go, you see, you just can't trust people. If you want a job doing, you got to do it yourself. And I recognize, I know it's a script and I know it's linked into my attachment style ah. uh, 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 as well, but it, it is there. I'm challenging it. I see it but it's still really hard. And, you know, um, I've been married to Colette now for uh, 22 years. And that took some adjustment of my script. Let's put it that way. 
yeah, it yeah. took some adjustment of my script to 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 trust another human being so fully uh and and uh yeah mm. it, it is it is interesting and, and you're absolutely right it, it, there is a second order consequence to live scripts and that is a is a, is attachment and i i think that when we become stressed what happens is we're liable to go back to our old live script and i think part of that is seeing that stress and saying well got to be careful here got to be careful here and, and it's really strange. I, I'll let you into a little secret. When when I say we record on we record on the Zoom platform because we're we're separated by about forty miles, I think, as the crow flies, Ken and myself. I I'll I'll sometimes I'll sometimes come in a little earlier to the Zoom room and wait. And when Pop, Ken pops up, I go, he's turned up. <laughs> 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 and, and there's a little part of me that goes, what? Why would he do that? And it's the same with everyone. When, when that little little bar at the top comes, it says Ken Kelly's entered the, or whoever it is. I go, that's remarkable. It's almost like I really don't right. get why people would turn up. Yeah, because the script says otherwise, doesn't it? This, yeah. they're going to let you down. They're not going to be there. They're not going to show up. Yeah, yeah. And and if so, and if someone is a few minutes late, I I I, I literally start getting really nervous. Um, uh, and then when they pop up and they go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a little late. It's like, oh right, that's okay. But it's, it's, and for all I know, and for all the training and all the therapy I've had and all the personal developments I've done, I still get that feeling and I still have to, I, I still have to address it and call it out and go, come on, Rory, you know, th this is, this is just an old piece of your script. Let's, let's get it going. And some days it's easier to do than others, if I'm honest, Ken. I don't know about you, but some days I, I can just dismiss it. Some days it's like, oh, it really gets me. <laughs> Yeah, very much so. And and maybe you're listening to this and you can relate to it at some level. I wonder what script you might carry around, what scripts you might see uh, along your training process from peers, what scripts you may see being brought into your 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 therapy room. Yeah. Uh, and I guess understanding it, reading about it, um, developing ourselves and, and our knowledge is, is empowering. And uh, we've got a handout for you on life scripts and you can grab that. It's free. You just go to counselingtutor.com, click on the podcast tab, uh, navigate to episode 224. That's today's podcast. And there it is on the page. We can uh, put in your email address and we'll send you the handout on life scripts. And uh, if there's, if there's anything that is, that I would like to, give us a gift it is that if you can see your own life scripts and start working on them there is amazing personal growth in life scripts i think Absolutely. it's a lovely little theory it's so neat and it, it makes so much sense to me and I, I literally in my head see myself silently pulling out my script and my little red pen and going <laughs> to underline it and i can stop myself in that motion and go hold on a second this, this is circumstance that this other person is not here or whatever it is. Yeah. And I can rationalize it. Put the pen away, Ken, put the yeah. pen away and yes. not in, and not underline that script just to challenge myself. Yeah. I always say to myself, come on, Rory, you're not six, you're 64, yeah. you know, which kind of takes me away from that child place. The script was written in and brings me into the here and now and, and, and very much the adult ego state you know so but it, it is interesting isn't it how we're, we're defined by our history again indeed and more than one theory suggests this <laughs> <laughs>